and welcome to another episode of Ask Tanya. This is a segment where you can ask all of your scalp and hair questions and I will answer them for you from a cosmetic chemist perspective. I think we are on episode number eight. I think we are. But either way, if you have not submitted your question, check out the Ask Tanya title, not title, what is this, a link. <laughs> check out the Ask Tanya link below to submit your question for a future upcoming video where I can answer your question. I would love to get to it. But in the meantime, we have a few questions here. And you guys know I don't waste any time. Let's get straight into it. The first question is from Miss Susie. And Susie says, what's your favorite bonnet slash scarf brand? Honestly, Susie, I don't even have a favorite scarf or bonnet brand. I just look for silk or satin. Ideally, that is the best material for our hair. Okay, the next question is from Ms. Shan, and Shan says, what ingredients should I look out for in products for low porosity hair to avoid dryness and provide moisture? That's a great question, Shan. So honestly, when it comes to like low porosity hair, the biggest thing I would look out for is texture, like the texture of the formula. Because ideally for low porosity, because your cuticles are so close, you really don't want anything too heavy. So try to stay away from like heavy butters and heavy creams. Now, there may be some who are like the exception to the rule, but usually these heavy products will easily cause product buildup, leading to dryness and then eventually breakage. So if you can opt for gel cream formulas or even like light cream formulas or even liquids would be ideal for moisturizing low porosity hair. Okay, the next question is from Ms. Hermelinda. Hermelinda says, hi, today after a long day of work and errands, eight to eight, I just want to shampoo my hair and put a leave-in conditioner two strand or flat twist and go to sleep. I hear you girl, I'm the same way. What's the consequence if I just shampoo and then style with leave-in conditioner? My hair could be 4C. That's a great question. So when it comes to shampoo and then going into a leave-in conditioner, it honestly, it varies because your hair might respond to this pretty well because technically you are still getting some conditioning in because even with that leave-in conditioner, there should be some cationic ingredients within the formula to condition the hair, even though it's a leave-in conditioner, because when we shampoo our hair, we technically do leave a bit of negative charges on the cuticle, and that's just the nature of shampoos. That's how they remove oil and dirt from our hair. So sometimes they will leave those negative charges, and if they're left on, it can lead to frizziness, dryness, things of that nature, but the conditioner comes in to save the day, smooth the cuticle and bring that softness back into the hair. Now, in your case of going from shampoo to leave-in conditioner, you know, you are still getting some conditioning, but the difference between a leave-in conditioner and a regular conditioner usually is that the conditioner will have a larger or a higher amount of those cationic surfactants. So it's gonna do a better job at conditioning your hair than your leave-in conditioner. However, your hair may respond differently. So my advice to you is this, try it. Do the shampoo first and then the leave-in conditioner and see how your hair responds. If you see that your hair responds well to it, then that's a good thing. But if you start to see that your hair is not responding well to it, then I would stick to the traditional method of doing shampoo, conditioner, and then leave-in conditioner. Okay, the next question is from Ms. Ellery and she says, what are the best products and hair care routine for someone that deals with several hair dermatitis and psoriasis? So great question. So honestly, when it comes to this scalp condition, you kind of, it's, it's tricky because certain products can irritate and even cause even more inflammation. So one of my good friends, I recommend her stuff all the time, is Atlanta Hair Doctor. If you have some hair dermatitis, definitely check out Atlanta Hair Doctor shampoo and her conditioner. Her formulas are amazing and they have been known to help a lot of women who do suffer from psoriasis, seven hair dermatitis, alopecia as well. But honestly, I would say be mindful of the type of products you put on your scalp meaning don't put any type of heavy products on the scalp. There are some women who put creams and butters on the scalp. And for someone who has the hair dermatitis, I would not recommend that. So that's part of like the routine maintenance I would just be very careful of. But either way, definitely get your hands on those two products. They're absolutely amazing, especially for scalp conditions like that. Okay, the next question is from Zell. And Zell says, what shampoo and conditioner and leave-in conditioner should I use for gray hair? So honestly, for gray hair, you can get away with a lot of the moisturizing shampoos, conditioners, and leave-ins that you see on the market for natural hair. I recommend my favorites in the Holy Grail product videos. I will post the links below for you to check out. But really the biggest thing is that you focus on moisture because gray hair does tend to be a lot drier. So I would say focus on deep conditioning your hair at least once a week. I would also moisturize your hair if not every day, once every two or once every three days. Implement also some hot oil treatments as well. That'd be 
huge for gray hair. So I would just say focus on that moisturization aspect and that's gonna help tremendously. Okay, and the last question is from Miss K Juanita and she says, hi Tanya, thank you for including this new segment on your channel. You're welcome. I got excited about the potential of growing in my weakened hairline in the many thinning areas of my scalp when I started learning about Fini Greek water, Fini Greek oil, and the benefits of henna. I had some great results early this year, but somehow over the past four months, I seem to be falling into major scalp issues where my scalp will itch, get sore, and then there goes the hair again. So not only is there no lip retention, but there is hair loss and thinning. Question, what is the best scalp care regimen and what should I use to moisturize and help grow my for my forcey, low frosty hair that struggled with sensitive scalp issues? I would be 100% blessed to find something I can stick with that works because so many other sisters are having results with growing their natural hair and retaining length and thickness. So I know it's possible. Thank you for sharing your expertise with the world. We are grateful. You're so welcome, Kay Juanita. So when it comes to like what you are experiencing, I would kind of look back and think what changed? Like there had to be some type of change that took place because at one point your hair is growing, right? You're seeing the strength, you're seeing the hair come in, but then out of nowhere things change. Did you get stressed out at some point during that time? Did your diet change? Did you see a, a, a noticeable difference in your body? You know, maybe your hormones fluctuating. It can be a number of those things. And if that's the case, it's not really product related. It's more so internal related. So I would kind of look at it from that aspect as well. On the flip side, if it is more so scalp care regimen related, I would say um, make sure that there's no product buildup on your scalp and you do that by ensuring that you don't wait too long to shampoo your hair. You didn't say what your regimen is, but ideally you don't wanna wait too long to cleanse your hair. And that's something that I see with some women, you know, they wait too long, they have product buildup, which leads to inflammation in the follicles, which then leads to itchiness and irritation and their hair starts to fall out, you know? So I would say make sure that you have a good shampoo regimen. And this can be once a week, once every two weeks, but I wouldn't go longer than a month when it comes to shampooing your hair. Um, be careful about certain products on your scalp. Do not put, well, I don't recommend, creams and butters on the scalp so be careful of that and i would say also detox your scalp there's nothing wrong with good old acv rinses um aloe vera gel or aloe vera juice scalp massages before your wash day or even on your wash day little things like that make a huge difference for our scalp but i would really look into any type of changes that took place during that time specifically around your diet stress and your hormones now as far as moisturizing low frosty 4c hair I want you to try this, and this is for anyone else who wants to try this as well. I want you to do um, three products, or three, like a three trifecta type of products. It's similar to the liquid cream and oil, so LCO in this case, right? I want you to get your hands on the Apogee um, Pro Body and Leave-In Conditioner. So spray that on your hair, always do sections. So put your hair in sections, six sections, eight sections, whatever you can do. Spray, so spritz this product on your hair. You don't have to drench it, but just a little bit on your hair. Follow it up with um, the Donna's Recipe Sweet Potato Cream. Light them out, a little bit goes a long way. Put that on your hair and then follow it with an oil. Now, because you have 4C hair, you can get away with hair grease, depending on the thickness though. But if you have fine 4C, I wouldn't do it. But you can use hair grease or you can use a carrier oil like olive oil, avocado, or jojoba oil. And put your hair in twist at night and unravel it the next day or whenever you're getting or going out about and you will notice how moisturized your hair is now something like this this may be a daily thing this may be a once every two day things like me but i like that combination i've been using it for a little bit now and i'm seeing a difference and i'm just noticing the moisture retention with my hair so i wanted to share that with you as well but definitely check that out keep me posted and let me know how that works for you all right everyone that is the end of episode eight which i think is episode eight but if you would like to get your questions answered in the upcoming ask tanya segment Definitely go to the link below and go to the Ask Tanya tab on my website to submit your question. I look forward to answering your question in an upcoming Ask Tanya video. Once again, guys, to learn more about your hair from a cosmetic chemist perspective, check out these amazing resources up here. My best advice are in these eBooks, so definitely check them out. I'll post link below for you as well. And if you would like one-on-one -on -one hair care coaching where I can connect with you one-on-one -on -one and create a customized hair care plan for you with product suggestions, check out the link below for more information. All right, guys, I love you and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.